That is the situation in Kasese. We hope the Ministry of Works and Transport, together with UNRWA, they're finding lasting solutions to that. Now, the International Monetary Fund IMF Executive Board uh, on Wednesday approved 491.5 million US dollars. That's about 1.9 trillion um, shillings in Uganda under the Rapid Credit Facility. This is meant to help Uganda address the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, joining me for this conversation is our business entrenched anchor, Arnold Segawa. <laughs> Good morning, Arnold. Morning, Andrew. Uh, what thanks. does this make to the COVID-19? Should we say this is the confidence the president has always had in his speeches? He said, don't talk about the economy, let's first survive. Did he have a backup of this or something? It's, uh, it's, uh, thanks, thanks, Andrew, for having me and uh, the kind words there on the introduction, uh, business entrenched. Uh, <laughs> of course you are. Uh, when, when, so, so the IMF has uh, very many facilities. Mm. Uh, there could be a, 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 a special uh, a drawing rights kind of facility where it's staff monitored, mm. you know, where by staff monitored, what you mean is uh, you do have IMF resident staff in a country. Take, for instance, what Uganda has right now, mm. where you do have a resident representative. Her name is uh, Miss uh, Mira, uh, mm. Clara Mira. Mm. Uh, she is here full time. You know, she uh, sits with the BOU, Bank of Uganda, and they sit down and they talk about these kinds of things. That is staff monitored. Mm. Now, you could have, uh, let's say, Somalia which is also a member, but mm. you, because of the situation, you cannot have IMF staff in yeah. the middle of Mogadishu. Now, mm. that is a kind of a different arrangement. Mm. Now, for the IMF to have this kind of facility uh, to combat uh, COVID-19, mm. first of all, they need to agree, and this is what happened in Washington, D.C. just mm. last night. You know, uh, they sat down and they agreed how much should be dispersed. If I'm um, uh, uh, to get the number right, it is just north of uh, 491 million US dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, the, f the most striking thing that uh, we need to understand here is this is uh, just at our quarter. Now, mm -hmm. a country like Uganda cannot get as much as in terms of a credit facility as much as a country like Egypt or Nigeria or mm -hmm. uh, let's say South Africa, which are bigger economies. Take, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, to put this in context, uh, Kenya, on the other hand, on the same day, mm. uh, close to a 739 million US dollars was approved. Now, a facility of this magnitude is uh, are supposed to give us fiscal space. Mm. Now, what do I mean by fiscal space? Fiscal space is now the helm across the road here is the Ministry of Finance. Mm. And now would be the time for them to spend, spend on health care, mm. spend on some countries like Kenya have actually uh, gone as far as, you know, giving some follow, you know, mm. uh, for some uh, uh, people who are not working at the time. Now that is going to hurt the Treasury. Now, when that hurts the Treasury, how are they going to pay up? Remember, Kenya has even goes, gone as far as uh, cutting down the pay as you earn, yeah. you know, for this particular yeah. time. So... You need fiscal space in order to spend more on things like healthcare in such a tough time, mm. which God knows we all didn't see coming. Mm. But where are you getting the money? Now, that's where the IMF comes in mm. and it gives you uh, something that's, you know, uh, not, not so big, not so small. Mm. Uh, in, in terms of Uganda, that's uh, the just over 300 million US dollars. Mm. This was not said it, it's either loan or a grant, but it was termed as a rapid credit facility and a rapid uh, credit facility and it's under the lending tracing platform what does that mean so the way the imf works is uh, quite interesting the to create some context is uh, Bretton woods institutions the world bank the imf uh, when they are lending but usually mm. when they are lending to developing countries most of these loans will be on zero interest. Okay. Now, as per the year 2000, we had something called highly indebted poor countries, and there was a program to write off all our debt mm. to zero. Uh, of course, there was uh, very, very uh, jubilant days. We were out screaming and shouting and very excited. All our debt was written down, uh, basically, well, in, on paper, to mm. zero. Mm. Uh, uh, and uh, fast forward to where we are right now, close to uh, 20 years later, mm our debt has still gone up gone to, up. what, yeah. uh, 40, 39, 37% mm. to GDP. That's, of course, for East African countries. Now, to answer your question, what we'd be looking at here is the kind of debt where, yes, you would have to pay up, mm. but the interest would be not or 
something like 0 0.01. I haven't so read the it's final at 40%, detail. Our debt is at 40%. So if you're paying it, it, it won't hurt us so bad as an economy. Uh, that's, a, that's, that's a tough one. Uh, debt to service, the, the cost of us servicing our debt is still uh, quite high depending on who you're actually asking. Uh, I'm talking now on a regional basis. Um, so it wouldn't be fair to say uh, debt to GDP is the outright, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's written in stone and it's that kind of thing. The way institutions like the IMF look at it, it's, it's a bit more uh, complicated and what they look at more is uh, debt sustainability analysis. Mm -hmm. So if you borrow one million US dollars mm -hmm. as Uganda to, let's say, build a road, mm -hmm. to, let's say the bypass, what the, uh, the, the, the IMF will look at is Will that bypass have enough revenue or generate enough revenue for you to pay back the one million? Mm. And in how long? Mm. What's the population growth? What's the fiscal space? Mm. Where's this road going? What would it mean for the airport? Would it create more traffic? Are you seeing all these variables mm. that they're putting into the equation? Mm. So that ultimately informs the debt sustainability analysis for them mm. to say that you're not distressed. Oh, yeah. As opposed to a country like uh, Zimbabwe, which right now is pleading for international lenders. Well, the World Bank came through yesterday and, mm -hmm. and said we'd give you something. <coughs> but do you see the difference? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, more, it's, it's way better to look at debt sustainability analysis than looking at an overall figure like debt to GDP. You know, oh. that, that gets all of us rattled and running around. God knows a better metric would be uh, debt to export. That makes sense. Yeah, because if we were to look at Bubu and mm. say that, you know, Bubu is working and we're exporting, yeah. we shouldn't worry about our debt because God knows our, de our we, you know, we, our flowers working. and uh, yeah. pancakes and sending are being sold abroad. Mm. Yeah. Well, there you have it. That is Arnold Segoe has brought this into context. A lot more money is actually here. Let's hope for something bigger to come. Well, that brings us to the end of our Morning at NTV today. And shortly after me, much more exciting programming follows. Remember to follow NTV on Facebook, on Twitter, and Instagram. It's NTV Uganda. I'm Andrew Chamagero. And shortly after us, of course, we're having Farida Nakazewa with Mwasu Zamutia. Good morning.